Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're gonna live in. High rise, luxury living. People are the vehicle, people are the connection, people are the expansion. Helping folks just like you find your dream home. It just never disappoints. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The opportunity to achieve our biggest goals and aspirations. It's the American dream. Hi, and welcome to the American Dream. My name is Ashley Fox, and I'm your host for this episode of Selling Chicago. Today, we are in Barrington, Illinois, about 30 miles outside of the city of Chicago. This is one of the most sought after suburbs to live in. Today, I'm visiting two of my favorite businesses. They're both women run and owned, both recently opened, and they are booming in popularity. First, we are at Meadow Hill Breads, run by Christy Treitler. Come on in with me, and let's see some behind the scenes of how she does it. So I'm here with Christy Treitler of Meadow Hill Breads. And for those who don't know, what is a micro bakery? So bakery, micro, it's just a bakery, but on a smaller scale. So it's just me, I'm a one woman show. And so instead of pushing out 200 loaves of bread, it's just what I can do. So just on a smaller scale, that's why it's micro. So how did Meadow Hill Breads come to be? In August, it was my first year home with my kids after teaching for 10 years, and I wanted to teach them how to make money, and then also, you know, how to save. And so we put mom's bread into a little cooler on a wagon, and we rolled it down to the end of the driveway with a sign, and we just started selling bread. So take me through your day, how you make this, and just show me how you make this beautiful bread. So, because I'm a stay-at-home mom, a lot of it is done before the kids get up and then also when they go to bed. So my days usually start around 4 a.m. Um, there's two days, so there's the day that I make all of the dough. So both days, I'm up at 4 a.m. mixing all of the dough, and then by lunchtime, that's when I measure and shape the dough. And then the next day, it's again 4 a.m. wake up and I bake all of the bread. And that's it. As Meadow Hill Breads continues to grow over the next couple of years, what is your vision for this? I could, never could imagine in a million years that this many people would be wanting to buy my bread. And so as much as I would like to think big, right now it's just day to day as I take my family on this crazy bread journey. I wanna thank Christy for inviting us into her home and showing us behind the scenes of her business. I'm gonna take my bread. I'm off to Bente Vintage in Barrington, one of my new favorite shops. I'm here at Bente Vintage. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna meet the owner, Nicole, and see what she has inside. So I'm here with Nicole Cruz of Bente Vintage. And my first question for you is why rugs? Rugs drew me in for so many reasons. They are sustainable. They are works of art for the floor. They are long lasting, they're handmade. And also you don't need to baby them. So tell me, what does Benta Vintage mean and how did this all come to be? So I'm Norwegian and I wanted to honor my Norwegian heritage. Benta doesn't necessarily have anything to do with rugs, but it means blessed. I feel really blessed to be doing this. Now, not a lot of people know much about rugs, so I know there's got to be like a common misconception about them that people just assume. Right. So I think the rugs cost so much, they're handmade items, right. that people are nervous and want to baby them. Oh. And I think there could not be anything further from the truth. So they're handmade, they're made with high quality natural um, fibers, and they can really take a beating. You know, they're between 30 and 120 years old, the rugs we have in the shop. Whoa. Right. And they've lived their life and they still have like 30 or 40 more years, if not more, of life to live. Okay, so I'm very curious, where do you source your rugs from? I source my rugs from Turkey and Morocco. Okay. I 
want to thank Nicole with Benta Vintage for sharing her passion and educating me on all of the imperfect things that make rugs so special. For Christy with Meadow Hill Breads for showing me behind the scenes on how she makes her beautiful and delicious breads. This is all for me on this episode of the American Dream Selling Chicago. I'm Ashley Fox and I'll see you next time. I'm Natalie Ryan. And I'm Anna Piasconi. And we're your hosts of the American Dream TV Selling Chicago. We're joining you today from the beautiful village of Hinsdale once again, where we'll be talking about how you can elevate your home through art curation. Not only does art help to enhance and show your own personality and style, but it also really elevates your home in a way that furniture cannot. After you purchase your dream home, the next step is usually to decorate your home. The last aspect of that is often finding art for the walls. One might argue that that should be your primary focus or the first thing you look for. We're very fortunate that we have several art galleries right here in town in Hinsdale. And we're joining you today from one of our favorites, the Virgil Catherine Gallery, which focuses on household names and specializes in modern and emerging artists. Thank you so much to Catherine Panacala and Dayan Misbrenner for inviting us into the gallery to take a look at their current collection. Let's go take a look. Definitely be sure to stop into the Virgil Catherine Gallery the next time you're here in Hinsdale. We are now going to go visit our friend Hope Lloyd Brown of Hope Lloyd Brown Fine Art and curator with Triad Art Group. Hope specializes in fine art and gives you a more intimate experience with the sometimes intimidating art world. Here we are at a beautiful historic home in Hinsdale that has been updated and renovated for today's living. We are so lucky to be here today to tour the home, but we're really here for the art. This home has one of the most expansive art collections that I have ever seen, and it's cool how it has a mix of old and new, traditional and modern art, including a lot of photography as well. It's truly an example of how art can elevate real estate. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so excited to have you. Thrilled to have you. We have a few questions for you, more than a few probably. First one, how does art collecting really influence design and architecture? Well, the incredible thing about art is that no matter what building it's in, it's going to transform the space. So you could live in a traditional home and have modern art, and you can live in a modern house and have traditional. And my favorite is to have a huge variety of both, which what I always say is that you'll have your art longer than you'll have the house that it's in. So love the art that you have and it will transform the space and personalize it to your own taste. Hope, how do you work with seasoned collectors to incorporate art into the home? Well, often when a collector has an expansive collection already, they can walk into a home and envision where their art is already gonna hang. Sometimes though, they're having trouble that they have this existing collection and I come in and redistribute. Sometimes they get so fixated on, this was over the mantle in my old home. It sometimes needs to find a new home. So what my job is, is to find the best fit for the existing collection that they have. Hope, there are so many incredible collections here in this home. Tell us a little bit more about this specific collection. This is a collection of an estate that we actually work with out of Paris, and it's a collection of the Pierre Argelet, Salvador Dali hand-colored etchings. Each of these are part of that collection that was done between the late 1950s and early 1970s, and it's an incredible arc of his work at that time period. Thank you so much for joining us. 
We hope you learned a little bit how you can elevate your real estate through art and how to obtain such art for your home. Thank you so much to Virgil Catherine Gallery and Hope Lloyd Brown for making us feel a bit more cultured. And we'll see you again on the next episode of Selling Chicago, the American Dream TV. Hi everybody, I'm Maria Devins with Baird & Warner and your host with American Dream TV, Selling Chicagoland. Today we're meeting Mike Angelina, who is the founding partner of Angelina & Herrick, a real estate law firm here in the northwest suburbs of the Chicagoland area. We'll be talking with Mike, finding out why he became a real estate attorney and what his forecast is for the 2024 market. Next, we're off to Gray's Lake, which is a wonderful lakeside town in Lake County, Illinois. I've got a beautiful gem of a house to show you. But right now, let's go meet with Mike Angelina. Hi, Mike. Hi, Maria. How are you? Doing good. How about you? I'm good. Thank you so much for sitting here with me and taking time out of your busy day. So I know you're coming up on your 34th year here in law. Tell me a little bit about how you got into law. When I was in college, getting towards the end, I was trying to decide what to do. Mm -hmm. I had a business degree. When I got out of law school, I, I've always kind of wanted to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. But over time, I started to realize that I really liked real estate because it was one part of law where you're always, not that you're not helping people in other areas of law, but here it's an exciting thing. People are buying a house. Yes, which uh, is the biggest purchase really for, for most of them. Why is it so important that buyers and sellers use a real estate attorney? In Illinois, uh, you have to have that you use an attorney. From a sales perspective, a licensed attorney has to prepare some of the conveyance documents mm -hmm. to sell. So you need a lawyer to sell. Tell me what your thoughts are um, on the 2024 real estate market. What are you seeing or anticipating? Well, from what I've read and heard, uh, it seems like we're gonna have the same kind of year that we had last year. Uh, as a firm, going from 2022 to 2023, we were down about a third in okay. transactions. It was a seller's market in 23. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's gonna be a seller's market again. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably would agree with me. Uh, interest rates are gonna play a factor in, in what happens. I think one of the reasons why it was slower last year was because the rates were high. Yes, uh, but they're coming down now. Right, so it was, it was the higher rates. It was the fact that there wasn't a lot of inventory yep. because people who've been living in their house with a you know two and three quarter percent interest rate, are thinking well, I'm not going to give that up now and yep. yeah go into seven and three quarters and yep. uh, so there was less inventory and that also drove prices up yep. values went up too so yep. now you've got higher uh, values you've got higher interest rates right. It was no inventory or lack of inventory. Right. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for sitting down again with me. Um, I loved all the, the valuable um, insight that you gave us and to the viewers. Um, so thank you again for, um, for you know, the interview and thank you for 17 years uh, of course, friendship of and great, great and, business. And thank you. Today we're in Gray's Lake. Gray's Lake is a village in Lake County, Illinois, about 40 miles north of the Chicago downtown area. Um, it was built or settled in 1840. It is also home to Lake College, Lake County Fair, and it is literally smack dab in the middle of Gray's Lake is Gray's Lake. Gray's Lake offers fishing and boating and swimming during the summertime, ice hockey, ice fishing, and ice skating. It is also home to about 22,000 residents who just live and love the lake life. It's a great hometown, small town um, area filled with neighborhoods, quaint shops, and wonderful homes. I want to thank my guest today, Mike Angelino with Angelina and Herrick for joining me. And I want to thank all of you for touring with me in this gorgeous home here in Grays Lake. 
I'm Maria Devins, your host with American Dream TV, selling Chicago land. And until we see each other again, stay well. Everyone loves a bakery, and this hometown bakery won't disappoint. I'm Karen Goins, your host of American Dream TV, and today we're at Blessed Little Kitchen in the heart of Huntley, Illinois. The owner, Mary, mother of five, has been making delicious baked goods for over 20 years. Today we're going to talk to her about why she started baking and what inspired her to start her own business. Thank you, Mary, for being a guest on the show today. So I'd like to start by asking you to give us a little bit of background of how you started baking and then what led you to open your business. Sure, so growing up, I lived with my grandma when I was 10 and she was a chef and I always used to watch her in the kitchen and I just fell in love with the baking side of things. I would say when I was about 15, I started creating my own recipes and really messing around in the kitchen. And I have this little leather book that I've had for the past you know, 25 years that I would just jot down recipes in. And that's where my love of baking started. And I always said that one day that my dream would be to open a little bakery cafe. Um, after we had our fifth child, it's very difficult to be a working mom and have children, especially five of them. So my husband said, well, why don't you just try selling cookies out of the house and just see how it goes? So I started with, I think I only had six of our specialty cookies at that time and just really sold to family and friends and did church events and it just boomed. And then from there with health code and the health department, you can only sell a certain amount out of your house. Once I hit that cap, I moved to a commercial kitchen and then my husband said, once you hit this many sales, you can start looking at retail. And so then I hit that many sales, we started looking at retail and in 2019 we opened here. So Mary, what inspired you then to open the bakery? To open the retail location, I really wanted to service my community. I didn't want to just be a bakery. I wanted to be a place where I could do different ministry work, where I could really engage with the community and help the community. Also, I wanted a place for my children. One of my children has special needs and there's a lot of fears that run through your mind of will they ever be able to be independent? Will they be living with us forever? Will they ever have a job? Part of it was so that my children would always have a place. They would always have employment. They would always know that this is where they can come and be safe and be employed. So tell us what makes this bakery so special? Couple things I personally think. One is just the fact that we're a true scratch bakery, meaning absolutely all of our product comes from our own hands. We are not buying frozen doughs and filling them, we are creating everything with our own two hands. That's really unique, especially in this time. A lot of bakeries aren't like that. The second thing would be that you can authentically be who you are and love who you love and be accepted. So this is our safe place. Everybody here has different belief systems. They come from different places and we all just love each other. The last thing I would say is our ministry work. I have a ministry heart. That was the whole reason that I opened so that I could service my community. So I really want to show everybody that every single human being in this world has a place. They are valued and while everyone's abilities might look different, that doesn't mean that their worth is different. We all have worth. Thank you, Mary, for sharing your story. I want to get in on the action. What can I do? Let's do some cookie decorating. Wonderful, great, Come let's on do back. it. Here's Megan, she's our head decorator. We're just gonna do a simple baseball today. Thank you so much for letting awesome. me have this opportunity to meet you and talk with you and, and practice my uh, decorating skills. I'm Karen Goings, this is the American Dream, and until next time, stay sweet.
Alexa Wagner, your host of the American Dream. Today I'm in Plainfield, Illinois, and I'm thrilled to shed light on two family-owned, multi-generational businesses that have stood the test of time. Let's check them out. So Christina, I'm so excited to be here today. I know I've been here several times before because I watched this whole place get built. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we just wanted to make sure that everybody got a chance to see this amazing place and hear all about how it came to be. Um, I love this entrance because you get to see all the new cars. Well, not everything in here is new, Alexa. Oh, really? Yeah, come on, let me show okay, you. Okay, sounds good, let's go. So you're talking about this old thing? Yep, I know it might look a little familiar. I know you have a beautiful blue Bronco yourself. Yes, but this I is copied my, you. <laughs> this is my baby. This She's is a gorgeous. 1974 Ford Bronco. Christina's gonna tell us a little bit about the history since this is a multi-generational, third-generation business. My grandfather opened the store in 1963 and we are now three generations later, 60 years later still here in not only three generations, but our third building, which has been absolutely phenomenal. And I can't thank the people that we've worked with, our customers, everybody enough for helping us get to where we are today. You know, we've talked a little bit about the past and you can see the present. And for the future of Rod Baker Ford in particular, I know you have ideas of how to kind of blend the history of your dealership and all of the vehicles with the city of Plainfield and yeah. tell us about that. One thing we are big on here is the history of our community and the history of the dealership. Um, the dealership's part of the history of this town. So absolutely. we absolutely love to showcase that. And that's one thing I'm excited to, to tackle this year is adding some of that history of our town into our accessorized vehicle showroom and really let people see the history of Plainfield and how it's evolved over the years. Well, thank you, Christina, for having us today at this fabulous new dealership. And one of the things we didn't cover is that on Saturdays, Christina is so generous and provides lunch for all of the employees from the Doggy Diner, which is just down the street. And it's our next stop today. Come with us, check it out. From one multi-generational family-owned business to the next, now we're down here at the Doggy Diner, and we are lucky that the owner, Christy Nolan Fraga, is here with us. Explain to me how that all kind of got started. My mom bought the place for some Greek families that Opa. owned it, and she kind of took over and brought her kids right in. We went to school right down the street. Perfect. So she said, kids gotta come and work. She was a single mother and she put us to work right away. Okay, so I know your expansion went Woodridge, Bolingbrook, Plainfield. Correct. Because that's kind of how the evolution of where people were moving. So you kind of yes. like brought the food to where Correct. people were living so they wouldn't have to drive as far. Uh, when did your mom buy the one in Woodridge? So that was in 1985, many, many years ago. And then we've had Bolingbrook now for almost 25 years and now Plainfield for almost 15. Tell us a little bit about your love connection here at the diner. So um, this is a family business and my husband of 20 years, he started working in Woodridge when he was about 18. Oh, it was just okay. all business, all work. Fast forward a decade later, he asked me out on a first date and it was history after that. And now they have a teenage son who dips in and out. He's yes, busy, he's correct. in college. So he's kind of at that same stage where you were. Correct. I mean, it truly is a family owned business. The Nolan family. Yes, yes. Catering by Christie started correct. when? Uh, we started that after we opened Bolingbrook kind of customers calling in, seeing could we make them pasta uh, with the beef? Can we make chicken? So it started out very small and we just started adding onto the menu different items. So now it's expanded to all different sorts of things that we can do for almost any occasion. Well, thank you for joining me on this episode of The American Dream. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks and for having us. We'll see you next time.
Embracing the suburbs of Chicago in winter isn't just about weathering the cold. It's about embracing a thriving, warm community. So we're dressed for the winter here with our earmuffs, winter mittens and coat, but we're really excited because we're going to stop by the Opry and talk to Dan Chauvain. He's a local Western Springs resident who just opened his speakeasy. It's a coffee roastery in the morning, followed by a cocktail bar at night with live music, as well as a bottle shop. But before that, we're lucky enough to be able to join Penny Kirschbaum at Kirschbaum's Bakery. It's been here in Western Springs since 1953. They still use some of the same family recipes. They're very well known for their smiley face cookies. And I have a birthday party for my friend Katie this week, so we're gonna stop by and get her a treat. So today we're visiting the Suburban Gem Western Springs. Western Springs is located about 15 miles outside of the city loop with a population of 14,000 people. This city also boasts a private pool, the Timber Trails golf course, two rec centers, and fantastic highly rated schools. If you wanna know about the real estate market here, in the last year, 196 homes sold with an average sales price of 861,500. They had not one, but two sales at $3,100,000. If that isn't a great place to live, I don't know what is. So it might still be cold outside, but it's really warm here inside of Kirschbaum's. So as I said, I'm gonna pick up something for my friend Katie. She loves the cream puffs from Kirschbaum's. They're very famous smiley face cookies. And certainly I'm gonna to have to grab some cake pops. So now we have the pleasure of talking with Dan Chauvain. He's the entrepreneur who's opening the Opry in downtown Western Springs. You just opened this month. That's How correct. do you think it's going so far? It's going well. I mean, it's, uh, it's a learning process for sure, but the community's really come out and support us, so we're very happy with it. Tell me why you decided to open it here in Western Springs. Uh, my family and I have lived here for about 11 years. Um, we're members of the community, we really love the community. Um, the coffee company had been here since 2018, and so I had always had an idea of opening something for the coffee company, and then it kind of evolved into what it is now. I think of it as like an upscale country dive bar, but yeah, we've got Daydream Coffee was the comp company I founded in 2018, and this is Opry Provisions. It's a, as you said, it's a uh, retail bottle shop, boutique, cocktail bar, uh, and music venue, as well as a coffee roaster. What's your favorite part of owning this speakeasy, Nashville-inspired spot right here, close to home? Well, that's an easy one. I love our team that we got here. Everybody that we've brought on has been just stellar. And the second thing I like the most is meeting the other community members. So many people have come out and told me how excited they are for, for the venue and gotten to meet so many of my neighbors and their families. It's just been really fulfilling. I think we're really gonna be focused over the next year on building a reputation as a premier music venue here. Uh, we've got a lot of great things happening in the spring, a lot of people coming in from out of town, known artists, people from North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, um, Texas, California. We got Wisconsin, people coming from all over, excellent artists. Um, so I think people are really gonna know that we're a serious music venue and that they're gonna have a great time here. Thanks for joining me today where besides the chill outside, we got to discover the heartwarming community by visiting Kirschbaum's Bakery downtown and then the Opry Provisions right here in Western Springs. This is a warm and welcoming community full of unique experiences and we hope you get to join us out here in the suburbs. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show produced from America's finest city but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at the American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.